following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. First down. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. It's been 72 days since we've been on air. The first 70 days, there's not a whole lot that changed for the Dallas Cowboys, but the last 72 hours, oh my gosh, we've got a lot to talk about as the podcasts make their triumphant return to DallasCowboys.com. Welcome back, everybody. If you're like we are, we are so pumped up to bring you Cowboys Talk here in training camp 2020 as the football season right now is happening, and there's a lot going on leading up to that point. Welcome back in, everybody. This is Talking Cowboys. Kyle Yeomans alongside Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, and former Dallas Cowboy Isaiah Stanback. And guys, it's so good to be back with you. I, I can't tell you how much I missed you over the, the last 72 days, but it's also just compounded itself in the so, past couple hours. Because let it out, Kyle. Let it out. It's just, it's so much excitement around not only training camp happening, but Guys, the Cowboys got Everson Griffin. I don't know if you saw that news last night, but the Cowboys we did see that didn't news. pick that up. Uh, when you did, well, good thing we're going to talk about it over the next hour. But Rob, kind of break this move down. But the Cowboys go out and get one of the best pass rushers on the market. Yeah, this one came as a bit of a surprise, dude. I mean, it's it's a reported one year deal for about six million bucks, and Griffin's been on the market for a while as a free agent after he voided, he voided his, his deal with the Vikings earlier this offseason, became a free agent, and then the pandemic hits, and, and because of protocols around the league, you know you can't have free agent visits, you can't have physicals, and he's been out there rumored to maybe go back to Minnesota, maybe Seattle, but this is a big stroke by the Cowboys in terms of getting some big-time deep defensive line depth, a guy that can help fit right in at right defensive end, 74 and a half career sacks had eight sacks last year guys this reminds me a lot of getting robert quinn last year a mm. guy in his early 30s on a contract that's not hamstringing the salary cap and all of a sudden he can really help you Heckman. hey you guys are being way too cool about this okay <laughs> I, I understand you've been missing you know in action we're waiting to get back to talk football but Listen, I'm going to do it like everybody else is doing on all the other networks. When they have something to say, they say, listen first, all right? So, <laughs> guys, this is exactly what we needed. This is the, the piece. And it's not to say that Alda Smith isn't going to give us any production. But, guys, if you think about where Mike Nolan is right now in, at the star, he has got to be kicking himself with all of the guys that he can put in this rotation. I mean, just pick somebody, you know, and Everson, <laughs> Everson Griffin, look, and they're going to be the pundits that say, oh, we're getting a little older. And I know you're older as far as the, the, the lineup is concerned when you look at McCoy, Poe, and guys like that. They're in their 30s. But, guys, this is a, this is a, a group of guys that have all individually lit it up in the league from Tank to Poe, to McCoy, and now to Everson Griffin, a Pro Bowl of all pro. All of those things we have on our front on our front line. Man, did we get thick or what? Okay? Champ, come on, man. You, you come on, <laughs> champ. Come on, champ. Hey. I know you got something for the people because Isaiah, you when oh. <laughs> you got the news, I know you start fidgeting in your seat. Man, look at here. All I'm going to say is Mike Nolan, he, right now he is in a Lego factory and he's a master builder because he has all the pieces that he absolutely needs to put together a heck of a defense. These guys are going to be a prob. All right. Anybody who's on the opposite side of the ball does not want to deal with these guys. We talked about it prior to the break, um, but we're back now. And these guys have even and they've improved even more. Right, these guys have somehow, some way went out and found another pro bowler to add onto this already ridiculous defense, this already amazing front seven, and we're gonna pair that up with the secondary that we have, right? That now we already said doesn't need to have a whole lot of, of coverage ability, but now we're just gonna improve it that much more, right? By adding to this guy Griffin, who's a physical specimen, 6'4, 280 pounds, runs a four six. He's he's the only person. Aside from Aaron Donald over the last six years that has 55-plus sacks, and you're going to add this guy to this line? 
They're cheating. They're cheating. Think about this. Think about this. Three years ago, he signed an extension worth almost sixty million bucks. Okay, but he decided to void it because he hit certain incentives mm. with the Vikings, and the Cowboys get him for Nothing. six million bucks. Nothing. I mean, look yeah. that that is front office. Gold right there. I mean, this this guy can really come in and help them. And and what Heckma said earlier about and Isaiah too, guys that they've added that have been productive in the league. Five Pro Bowlers previously for these guys uh, that they've made Pro Bowls in the past. Five of them. And Gerald McCoy's. Pro, I think he's the highest paid that they've added at three years and eighteen million bucks. They're adding talent, guys. Yes, that are in their thirties, some of them, but that don't hamstring your cap and have familiarity with guys. On the coaching staff, Jim Tom Sula with Alden Smith, George Edwards, who's their new senior defensive assistant, coached Everson Griffin for six years. So when you're talking about stepping into a training camp where you don't have a lot of time to work on the field, at least there's familiarity with the guys. They know what they're getting. And they know exactly what they're getting with Griffin. And the thing that makes it most exciting because of the signing, it's because it's the cherry on top. It's not the pie. It's not the, the, the whipped cream. It's the nice little cherry that's placed on top. Because you made all the moves you did in the offseason, you added Gerald McCoy. You added Dontari Poe. You added Alden Smith. Hopefully you get Randy Gregory back. But the big question going into this offseason was, how do you beef up the middle of the defensive line? Mm -hmm. And how do you replace Robert Quinn? Well, you upgraded <laughs> the defensive line in the middle of it, right in that interior with Dontari Poe, with Gerald McCoy, and then Neville Gallimore in the draft. Then you turn around and you add a guy like Everson Griffin to replace Robert Quinn. And for those of you who may not think he's an upgrade, let's look at this. Last year, Griffin had 70 pressures. Quinn, who was arguably the best pass rusher on the Cowboys last year, had 57. So 13 more than Robert Quinn did. And when you talk about run defense, run defense-wise, Griffin had a 63% or not percent, but grade at yeah. his run defense compared to Robert Quinn, who was at a 53, so 10 points higher. So yeah. it, it, at least as of last year, and if you're watching the film and you get a little bit of 2019 Everson Griffin, there's no reason not to be excited about this. But Heckma, whenever you talk about the size and the speed and his ability, what does he bring to this defense that they didn't already have previously? Well, well, first of all, all respect to Robert Quinn and what he did. 11 sacks mm -hmm. and even missing four games last year. I mean, you it, he had a monster season. But when you talk Everson Griffin and Robert Quinn, it's like talking about two world-class fighters in different weight classes. It's just different, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and the deal is, is that Everson Griffin is categorically way better against the run than Bobby, Robert Quinn ever was, okay? And so that's what you're getting. The, the amount of moves that Everson Griffin has from the outside. Now, we got to talk about technique because the word of 2020 is going to be hybrid and what you can do with Everson Griffin. His ability to rush from the outside, but also because of his size, he can move in. You also yep. have the personnel to move guys like, let's say, Bradley and I. He can also move inside. And let's not forget about Crawford and the tweeners and the guys that you have in certain and I'm just talking about the chess game of football and what they're going to be able to do and so Everson Griffin just gives this defense a plethora of different schemes that they can play and guys let's talk about the competition that's going to be on this defensive line when the Cowboys go ones versus ones or twos versus twos my God, man. Or right, let's just go goal line. When they go goal line <laughs> in two a days, you talk about nothing but pressure. The Cowboys are cooking with Crisco. Or, man, no, the Cowboys are cooking with, <laughs> with, with lard. All right? Lard. All right? That's what we're yeah. cooking with right now. And you got to see that. You're not even a football person if you can't see that. Man, we've got Legos and cooking and, and, <laughs> and weight classes. It's all over the place. But you, you mentioned kind of the battles of the, the offensive line versus the defensive line. They've had their battles in the past, and Everton Griffins will won a couple of those battles against Tyron Smith. And uh, just a reminder, those two were teammates at USC back in the day. Well, Everson Griffin got the best of, uh, of Tyron Smith this past season, actually had a sack in that ball game, and he had two sacks against also new teammate Cam Irving uh, whenever they played the Chiefs last year as well. But I, I rewatched that spin move last night. I rewatched that nuts. spin move they made on Tyron. That was, that was nice. That was nice. And, and that's, that's the thing that Robert Quinn brings – or not Robert Quinn, excuse me, Everson Griffin brings to the table is, is he brings so many different – moves and he brings that arsenal that you want from a pass rusher that maybe 
you wouldn't have had from uh, maybe a, Ty uh, a Tyrone Crawford on the edge or whoever was going to be there. But you mentioned competition, Hecla. And, and I think there's a lot of tough decisions that are about to be made on this defensive line. And, and Rob, you can speak to this, though, but if, if Mike McCarthy goes to where he wanted to be with the six defensive ends and the four interior guys, you got Tank, Griffin, Smith, Anai, Armstrong, maybe Crawford on the edge, and then who do you put in the middle? Gerald McCoy, Poe, Gallimore, Hill? Uh, even, and then if Gregory's in the mix, then you're going to have to cut one of those names. Yeah, you're right. There's a, there's a lot of competition. They, I think they got to figure out somebody to back up Tank on the left spot because I think Alvin Smith and, and Griffin have played the right end spot, I think, are, are probably more comfortable there. They need some depth there. Maybe a Nye can kick over to that side. Uh, but you mentioned the depth inside, Poe and McCoy. And I'll flip around to what Heckma said. You could kick McCoy out outside, too. He can play out in whatever you need. Um it's really good competition. Some of those younger defensive ends, it's going to be harder on them. Just remember, though, the NFL is allowing 16 practice squad spots. So, you know, you can still keep rights for guys if they pass waivers if you're not able to keep them. And the way things are structured, let's just be honest, no in-person work so far. It's going to be harder for younger guys to stand out. And it makes the Griffin signing, to me, even better because there's a guy that is – has played for someone on the staff. They know what they're getting. And from what I heard about him last night, his teammates absolutely love him. He was a leader in Minnesota, and I think he's going to fit right in as a guy, you know, a, a vocal presence and a guy that, that really uh, has has the respect of his teammates. Isaiah? Yeah, I, I think I, I totally agree with you, man. And, and the thing here is you guys keep attesting to it, and you guys keep talking about the versatility. You guys keep talking about their ability to be able to change things up on that side of the ball. We already know the defensive coordinator likes to mix things up. He likes to bring pressure. What this signing allows for, right, you guys got to remember, we have two guys that are on the pup list right now. So there's going to be an ability for guys to be able to get in there, get reps, get games underneath their belt, for us to be able to use those first games as film study, right? We get to use those as film study to be able to get it, to find out, can get Gallimore play, right? Um, you know, how are these guys going to fill in on the inside? How's the name going to do, right? Being able to rush on the outside against some real competition. So we're going to get a good look at these guys early on in the season. And then when everybody is healthy, they're going to be able to mix and match. I really don't believe that they want guys playing one position. We have enough talent on this side of the ball now where I think he wants guys coming from all over the place. I think every time the offense comes up to the line of scrimmage, I think he wants them trying to figure out, okay, who's where. And when you're able to do that, you're able to take the offense's mind off of being able to execute and put their mind on trying to figure out exactly what you're doing that's a great point isaiah because every time mike mccarthy has been asked about cheeto or guys on the d line or even on offense he was asked about guys on the offensive line he talks about position flex position flex can you do more than one job and that kind of speaks to the competition thing what how much can you do to contribute to our team and Heckman was kind of talking about that whenever he went into the hybrids talk. And that's what Mike Nolan brings on the defensive side. And I think Mike McCarthy wants that to kind of transfer over to the offensive side. He's gonna, you're going to see that in the wide receiving core. You're going to see it with uh, uh, Mari Cooper and Michael Gallup and, and C.D. Lamb. All three of those guys are going to have a couple snaps in the slot or they may have significant time in the slot. But staying on the defensive side, Heckma, whenever you have a guy – like Evers and Griffin, who can play inside, outside, left, or right, and then he could maybe even go back in coverage if you really needed him to <laughs> because of the speed that he has. What kind of flexibility does that open up for uh, not only the defensive line but the front seven as a whole? Yeah, like I said, it's it's all about the the chess game of football. You know, not tipping your hand. That's the one thing that you know. If if a, if a team can knows what you're going to, they're gonna pick you apart. Everson Griffith gives the Cowboys that confidence to be able to disguise things on the back end. Look at what this is gonna do for our secondary. That's already you know. Look, we lost guys uh, to free agency, uh, guys that are now we're looking to repurpose in Cheeto Wuzier, and we're thinking about maybe he's a safety. All of those things are relative when you shore up your front line. It makes everything that you do that much easier. And so also, I mean, not getting ahead of ourselves, but the, what it does for the linebackers. You know, just being able to have that girth up front, knowing that your linebackers can easily move uh, to the ball. You know, having guys like Don Terry Poe, now Woods, and also uh, McCoy, look, man, it's, it's just, you know, it's just going to make us that much better as we go along as a team. Rob, I don't know how you guys feel about the chicken or the egg thing with 
how what's more important, pressure or coverage on the back end? I've always been a front seven, get sacks, get pressure guy, and that to Heckma's point, that helps your secondary. I truly believe if the Cowboys can get just in the top ten, top half of the takeaway market this year, they're going to win so many football games. They have such Absolutely. an opportunity to do that because with the pressure up front, if they can if they can build some leads in, and also defensively give some extra possessions to an offense that has just a ridiculous amount of options, this team is going to be in really good shape. And I think adding a guy like Everson Griffin gives you more of an opportunity to do that because – he is a pressure player, and he can still do it even at 32 years old. No, Rob, I like what you just said because I, I think when you when you talk about it in terms of, you know, what's important, the chicken or the egg, that's a valid point. And I think that the NFL is starting to look at those things and, and how teams that are built structurally from the outside in help your pass rush. When, when Trayvon Diggs is giving a quarterback – Fits and having to look out there and say, okay, oh, I need to hold this ball because he's pressing. That gives Everson Griffin and our guys internally at the line more opportunity to get those sacks. So, I mean, all of those things are relative, and that's why, you know, obviously football is the ultimate team sport, but you're right. Having those, having that out on the outside, be impactful to make a quarterback second guess, man. I'm telling you, these are things that are all going to make the Cowboys defense that much more formidable. And honestly, you know, teams always play a mix usually of man and zone and coverage, right? But yes. they've added guys that can play that press man where you're up on the line of scrimmage. You've got to have pass pressure, pass rush pressure to be able to do that, to not hang your corners out to dry. And that's, that's again, that's why this is another, another reason why this is such a, a big move and an exciting move because it really shores up your, your depth and your pass rush. I think it, it also frees up the secondary, like Heckman was saying, but it also it just solidifies one of those other positions of need. And we, we were talking on the training camp kickoff show a couple days ago with Bucky Brooks, and we asked him, well, who's the biggest impact player? Who, uh, who's the under-the-radar guy that you're looking at? And he came out and he said, I, I don't have a specific guy. It's whoever starts at right defensive end. It opens up Tank Lawrence, and that's, ah, the, that's the specific side of the this addition that makes me so excited is because you, you can't necessarily double-team both those guys, and then you, we're going to talk about the linebackers a little bit later on in the show, so I'll save the how it opens up the linebackers <laughs> for the third segment, but uh, it, it, it's just it's the perfect move for Mike Nolan to have so many guys who can do so many things and then turn around and it opens up Tank Lawrence. What kind of season is he going to have, Isaiah, that – uh, he hasn't had in the past just because he has a guy on the other side. Yeah, freedom, right? When you, whenever I can tell you, as a, as a former player, whenever you have guys around you that can make plays, and the pressure is no longer on, solely on you to be that guy to have to generate uh, plays left and right all the times. Right when you have sixty snaps a game, if you have five great plays, that's a great day. Right now, you're taking somebody who doesn't have to have all that pressure on him. He has other Pro Bowlers around him. He has other guys that can make plays. It's going to free him up. And you feel like you're a kid in a candy store. You feel like you're playing with your brothers, like you're just playing some street ball. These guys are going to have a heck of a time out there together. And I guarantee you that you're probably going to see Law have one of his best seasons, if not his best season he's ever had. Isaiah, and I want to add, I want to, add to that by the fact of you being a former player. As you know, being fresh is the thing. So when you take Tank from, let's say, 58 snaps down to 40 snaps. Absolutely. I mean, he is like Usain Bolt out of the box now <laughs> because, he, because he's that fresh coming off of the edge. The other thing, too, is he's got – now everybody's offseason has been a little different, but he didn't get to, re, to train like he wanted to last year coming off the shoulder surgery that he had in April. And I think it affected him early in the year at least in terms of rust, technique, all those things. He doesn't have that issue this year, and he should be better for that. Should be, and I think it's going to make a, a big enough impact. And one final thing before we end up, I guess, uh, going into this this first break in this next segment, but the fact that the offseason has been what it has been, whenever you get a new head coach like Mike McCarthy, you're able to have the draft that this front office has had, and then you're able to have a free agency period where you add so much talent. The expectations are going to be high, but it doesn't always happen like this. It doesn't always happen as a Cowboys fan to where, oh, this is our year. You hear that all the time, year to year, and sometimes it's a little bit facetious. It may not be exactly what you're saying it's going to be, but this year's it just feels a little bit different because 
you're not always going to be on the same page as a fan base and as a front office. And Jerry came out yesterday in the press conference and said, it's about our fans. Oh, it's it's mo- most important thing is our fans. They're doing that right now. They're showing it that actions speak louder than words because the fans are calling for, hey, let's get a receiver at 17 if so- somebody falls. Well, hey, hello, here's C.D. Lamb. You turn around in, in, in free agency, let's go get a pass rusher. They go and grab the best one on the market. So it's really exciting as a Cowboys fan to finally have at least a little bit of time where you're on the same page as your front office because as a Cowboys fan growing up, it didn't happen a whole lot, Hackman. <laughs> man, the stars are aligning for us, man. I mean, I, I won't be sacrilegious to say God is a Cowboy fan, but I mean, look. <laughs> All right, CeeDee Lamb falls to us at 17, right? I mean, just right, just falls right in our lap. Then we get our cornerback with the second in, in the second round. And we've been juggling. Everybody has known, and you've talked about it, man. We knew that we needed a defensive end after Robert Quinn left for free agency. We had talked about in previous shows about Jadavian Clowney. Robert Quinn's, uh, um, even Everson Griffin's name has come up. It just didn't seem logical that thing, that it would align for us to be able to get a guy like that. Man, for this to happen on the, the eve, uh, days before, well, 48 hours before our first camp, man, it's just I mean, at this point, if we don't win it, what's going to be the what? What can we Uh-oh. say is the excuse now? Because we Uh-oh. got everything Uh-oh. we need. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to hear did that. I go too far? Did I go too far? I'm sorry. I'm just asking the questions that everybody is going to ask anyway. Okay. That's right. Rob. Well, you set the bar pretty high, heck. It's, it's, it's high. It's high, man. I mean, I, if I have a concern, I, and I've said this throughout the off season, it is that this off season prevented the Mike McCarthy from getting his program established, from Mike Nolan getting his scheme going, and I think that can be an issue. However, you can flip it around the other side and say with no preseason games, nobody's going to get a look at the Cowboys' new look defense or their offense, and that could help them at least early in the season. I think it helped the Cowboys early last season with Kellen Moore coming in with some changes they had. So it, it kind of goes both ways, and heck, you're right. I mean, in terms of upgrading the roster and adding players that can make an impact on defense – because that was probably the main focus in the offseason, they've done that. They've set themselves up on paper to have success. There's no question about that. Rod, that was a great point, man, in terms of, of, of these guys you know, possibly coming back and not having anybody have eyes on them, right? And Mike Nolan being able to have all these doggone resources and nobody knows what he's going to do, what his plans are, what schemes he's coming up with. That's, again, another cheat code that he has, right? But then we also take into consideration something that Mike McCarthy said during the press conference was that it was, it was very interesting for him to say that he feels like they're further ahead now than what they would have been had they been there the entire time. So that was very interesting uh, when, he, when he mentioned that. And I was kind of curious to see from what point of view. So that lets me know the confidence level that he has in the, in the, the fact that these guys are absorbing this information, these, this new system, both on both sides of the ball, actually in all three phases uh, of the game. So that's that's going to be something to keep an eye on because these guys are seemingly, based off that comment, they must be absorbing this information and they were ready to apply it. And that's, that's true. And, and honestly, it's like when we're asked what the defense is going to look like, it's hard to really give an answer because you don't you don't know. You know that they're going to – we've talked about the, the, the versatility and how they're probably going to try to disguise things more. But until we really see it, four, three, 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 four different alignments, we'll see. I mean, that's what's exciting is, is that we really don't have a, a clear picture of it, and that can be an advantage. Hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, I'm, uh, Heckman put it perfectly earlier when he said that's going to be the key word of 2020 <laughs> that Cowboys fans are going to have to learn. It's the word hybrid and it's as simple as that but it's so complex at the same time so it's going to be a lot of fun this year but uh, you mentioned a lot of the great things the Cowboys did this offseason one of those uh, that they didn't necessarily get done was lock up a long-term quarterback and was this offseason the beginning of the end of the relationship between Dak Prescott and the Cowboys we'll discuss what they talked about in the press conferences yesterday when we come back here on Talking Cowboys. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. 
Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUS. USA.com. Essilor. See more, do more. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too right above the subway well i bet you don't even notice it after the that's my neighbor angus a deal that's just okay is not okay get a great deal with america's best network come into an at&t store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for zero dollars down based on gws1 score september 2019 back to talking cowboys Back here with the second segment here of Talking Cowboys. Glad you're with us. Kyle Yeomans, Rob Phillips, Heckma Harrison, Isaiah Stanback. And I do want to encourage you guys, if this is your first time listening to Talking Cowboys, push that subscribe button or that follow button if you're on Twitter or Periscope or Apple iTunes. It doesn't matter. Wherever you're listening to it, press subscribe because we're going to have a ton of fun going into 2020 this year. We've been together throughout the offseason. We're going to continue uh, educating you guys on the Dallas Cowboys because if you're like me, whenever you start a podcast, you want to be smarter by the time you end that podcast. And that's exactly <laughs> that's that's what we're trying to do. And, and we could talk Everson Griffin all day. And, and luckily, I got permission from Derek. I don't know if uh, he hasn't heard this joke yet, but uh, I got permission from Derek. We're going to just take the, the breaks time slot, and we're going to go for three hours today and just continue talking. <laughs> let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> and let's, continue let's see. doing that. Yeah, let's see how that goes over. Hey, yeah, I don't think, yeah. I don't think your, that's going to happen. Hey, Kyle, I think, uh, Kyle, I got to ask you a question. Does your hat spit on your head anymore when you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. oh man! But uh, but in all seriousness, it's a ton of fun being back with Cowboys Nation and talking about the excitement around the last couple of hours or last couple of days, rather, uh, with this Cowboys team. We heard from the Mount Rushmore of the 2020 Dallas Cowboys yesterday as the state of the the program, state of the organization press conference to kick off training camp with Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, head coach Mike McCarthy, and then quarterback. Dak Prescott, and we'll get to, to Dak Prescott here in a little bit, but I wanted to kind of start off by really what has been the theme of the offseason, and that's challenges, and that's exactly what are still on the table for the Cowboys, not only on the field, but off the field battling COVID-19. There's a reason we're all still remote doing these podcasts, it's because we're still battling this as a world, as a society, as a country. And so uh, they came out yesterday and said, we're still planning to play all of our games in front of our fans, which is extremely encouraging uh, for all football fans anywhere on some of these days when you're seeing college football in some parts come to an end. You're seeing certain uh, stadiums around the, the NFL even that are saying we're not going to play with fans. But Rob, yesterday Jerry did come out and say, we plan on playing in front of fans, and that's exciting to me. Absolutely. And, and Jerry is probably the most optimistic person I've ever been around. You know, he, he, he's just optimistic about every part of his life. And, and he truly believes that the NFL is going to complete a 16 game season all the way to the Super Bowl. And, and back to the AT&T Stadium with fans, they're going to adhere to any protocols that the, the Texas state government, uh, you know, puts in place for that. But that is encouraging. It's exciting that that's looking like it's a possibility or it's going to happen. Um, it, it just comes down to on a daily basis with the protocols that the league has put into place that everybody does their best and takes the responsibility of, of being safe and doing things outside of football that will lend itself to preventing any spread of the virus throughout the league. You know, th there is no real bubble this year for the NFL. 
Um, the NBA ha- has one right now, and it seems to be working great. And uh, it, but it just it just goes down to players, coaches, staff, us, you know, just taking responsibility and trying to do the right things outside of football. So there's not a situation like we've seen in baseball where there's there's some outbreaks and then it threatens games being played. Yeah, I think when it when it when I was watching that that interview, like you said, Rob, it's it's Jerry's consummate optimism about the future of the organization always. And, you know, we all know that COVID-19 has it's unprecedented and everything that, that we've had to do from our personal lives to adjust to these times. You know, so, it, you know, it, this virus is going to dictate to us how we proceed and go forward. Uh, when you look at other leagues and how they've handled it, handled it, I think the NBA has been the example, but they have have isolated those guys in a bubble and I don't think logistically because of the numbers for football you can't do it but you see the NFL and especially the Cowboys taking every precaution man you have got to get tested every time you come into the building uh, media does not have access to players so the Cowboys are doing everything D- Jerry is not just giving you lip service he is backing it up by making sure that his <coughs> players are safe now you think you do the comparison between baseball and football think about baseball those guys travel way more during the week to games whereas in football it's just a one day turnaround thing all right and so look we're just we're all all of us everybody that's on this panel we need football to happen and we want football to happen but the reality yes. of the situation is is that look we want to be careful we want to make sure that we protect these men you know these men uh, and everybody that's in the organization because we're dealing with something that's dreadful. Yeah, um, heck, I mean, I don't think that anybody that's sitting here right now listening or even us talking expected uh, Mr. Jerry Jones to sit up there and say anything more than anything less than uh, uh, we're, we're playing football. Uh, I, I, I think I think I think I think we all expected him to say that. Uh, we all know that that's that's the man. That's the head. He leads from the front, right? Um, and and he, he he's a. He's a revolutionary, right? I mean, Jerry, Jerry, he always sees things coming. He plans for them ahead, so he's never cut off guard. He's never reactive. He's always proactive. Um, he's created this amazing facility, right, um, out there at the Star. Uh, he has the hotel right there with the partnership with the Army. Um, I wish, you know, hats off to him and the rest of the organization that have created um, this form of a bubble, right, as you guys uh, <laughs> mentioned. You guys mentioned, you know, base, uh, not baseball, but you guys mentioned basketball and even hockey, right? They're, they've done it right. Right. We have we have two sports that have went out there. We have them as examples. They've done it right. So to try to do something, uh, regardless of how many people we have out there, to try to do something other than what we already seen is the right way to do it. I think it's kind of absurd. I wish the NFL would mandate that every organization would do it. Um, but without that mandated order, we have two organizations in the Saints and obviously here with the Dallas Cowboys that are taking it upon themselves to ensure the safety of not only their players, but also their fans in the entire league. So hats off to the Cowboys for doing things the right way way i hope that everybody else follows suit you know Dak, go ahead go for it ron well to isaiah's point Dak said yesterday just to be quite honest the healthiest team is going to win a lot of games this year and have the best chance i mean that's just the reality of the situation and you guys spoke to it the star is kind of i mean it wasn't built for a situation like this but it can handle a situation like this the locker room Ford Center, you have an outside practice field. Uh, the Omni is big. I mean, you know, and I, I, that shows a lot of team unity for guys to decide mm-hmm. with the option, hey, we're going to bubble up during training camp for three weeks, and we may go longer than that. You know, it's a, Dak said it's a possibility. Now, that's a, that's a heck of a commitment to, to do that throughout the season, if that, you know, three, five months as opposed to three weeks. But that's a possibility, and that only can help your chances. And, and you guys are right. The work behind the scenes that the Cowboys have done to get this thing ready, is, it, it really is extraordinary. I mean, hats yeah. off to, to the operations staff. And, and Rob, to your point, I just want everybody to be clear on this. Everybody keeps talking about how much of a sacrifice it is for guys to stay at the hotel and, and it's inconvenient. All right, let's be clear. We all know that during this period of time, they would have been at a hotel anyways, right? Yeah. Um, and, and aside from this, if they had to go the entire season staying in a hotel, right, and seeing their families every so often, guess what? You have so many opportunities to make a run at a Super Bowl championship, right? I was blessed to play six years and walk away with a ring. There was guys that were way better than me. 
There was guys that played a lot longer than me that did not have that same opportunity. So when you look at especially an organization like this that is really, really set up and teed up to go out there and have a real run at the Super Bowl, forget sacrifice. This is your opportunity. So if it requires me sleeping in a hotel bed every day to go get that ring, guess what? When I look back 20 years from now and I still have those diamonds on my finger, it's, it's, it was well worth it. Preach. Well, uh, Isaiah, I kind of want to turn that back around on you, and that's where we see the leadership from this Cowboys team is the fact that this was a player-incentivized thing saying, we want to go do a bubble. Absolutely. And by the way, we need a new name for the bubble. It's got to be <laughs> something else. I, double I, bubble. Like, I get what bubble. it is. It's a bubble, but <laughs> we've got to be more creative. A, a boy's bubble. I don't know. It, it, that's even weirder. But I think whenever you look at the, the leadership that it takes – for some of the higher ups, or at least the the more vet, veteran guys on this Dallas mm-hmm. Cowboys team, of saying we want to be the healthiest team, we want to be in a position where we're going to make a run for a Super Bowl because we understand the expectation and the reality of where we are as an organization right now. What does that take as a player, to, or, and how respected is that by other players in that locker room, Isaiah? I mean, it's definitely, uh, you guys are going to be looked at with high regard, right? Guys are going to be highly renowned, highly regarded guys. But, I mean, uh, to my point, you know, when you're, when everybody is, is, is as, as Coach Willingham would say back in the day, uh, uh, fine focused on, on the same goal, it's, it's no longer a sacrifice, right? You're not sacrificing, right? And this is, this is our commitment. We commit to this organization. We commit to this or to this team, to this city, to each other, to give this the best opportunity to come in in the best shape, to be mentally as precise as possible and go out there and execute to the best of our abilities. And if I do anything that's contradictory to that, I am no longer upholding my commitment to the, to everybody that, that that's relying on me. So kudos to those guys for stepping up to the plate and saying this is what we want to do because it shows you that these guys really want to go out there and get that ring. Yep. I think that's a that's a great point, and, and Dak Prescott's been one of the, the forefront names as a part of really the group of players that wants to, to stay healthy and, and take care of their job and be responsible, even despite some of the questions surrounding his contract this past year. And, and I, I'm kind of transitioning into our hopefully franchise quarterback moving forward. That's what both sides said yesterday. Dak Prescott came out in his press conference and said, I want to be a Dallas Cowboy till I can't throw the football anymore. And that's encouraging. <laughs> You, you, you talk about what the front office said. Jerry Jones says, I think he's outstanding. He's our franchise quarterback moving forward. Jer- Stephen Jones echoed that. Mike McCarthy is never uh, straight away from that. But, Rob, is, this, uh, is there any strain whatsoever in this relationship to the point of we could be worried Cowboys fans uh, down the road that Dak Prescott isn't in a, a Cowboys uniform? Well, Dak said yesterday there's no frustration on his part. He's looking towards the season. I believe that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some disappointment on both sides. They, they couldn't get it done. I mean, we've been talking about this for over a year now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I, both sides want to get it done. Uh, but it, it, for whatever reason, there's been other factors. I don't think you can say one side or the other is the reason why. I think some to some extent, Dak wanted to bet on himself last year, and it worked. I mean, he, he had a great season, and he just set himself up. Um, there is the length of the deal. I think that's a real thing. And, and I, I think there is some credence to what – uh, the Joneses said yesterday about you know 16 guys were franchise tagged this year and two I think two got long term deals. There is question about the economics going into 2021 and what the cap's going to look like because there's bound to be revenue loss in the NFL that will affect the salary cap level. All that being said, this is a deal that it needs to get done. It's got to get done because you, if the cap, if the cap is lower or flat next year, you can't have. Dak Prescott, I don't think, on a thirty-seven million dollar franchise tag. I, I don't think yeah. that's I don't think that's really feasible unless you really have to you have to do a lot of maneuvering creative with your with your contracts to get that done. If it's gonna be long term, they need to get it done long term next year for sure. Heckma? Yeah, man, I, you know, I loved seeing Dak yesterday. And and I just want to speak to the fact of of how poised Dak Prescott was. I mean, this was his Mm -hmm. first time uh, being in front of the media, answering these questions, and his ability to answer everything 
perfectly. I think it resonates to the kind of guy that he is, his leadership, and just why he's an endorsement magnet, because he's going to protect the brand at all costs. Please know that the media were waiting for quotables, uh, headliners, all of those things, and that gave them nothing. And maybe the one when they, they pressed him about the difference between M Coach McCarthy and Jason Garrett was the one thing that he kind of went out on the limb and said, hey, the difference is we just didn't play smart football last year. But I don't think that that was necessarily a jab, so to speak. I mm -hmm. think he was just speaking honestly about, you know, the football experience last year. But he was poised. He made sure that, you know, he, there was no – that he didn't speak to any contention uh, between the, the front office and himself. He even said – I trust Steven, I trust Jerry and my and my agents to get this deal done. So to me, that was the best part about it. But I don't see how anyone can look at Dak Prescott and look at the way that he answers those questions and have a bad thing to say about this kid. Because, man, to me, he handled the pressure, especially with, you know, all of the, the networks using his name and this this uh, contract dispute as, you know, ratings, uh, clickbait, basically basically for the last five months and he just and he handled all of it with class and I loved it. Well, I think the, the best thing about it is that this is the end of that conversation, at least for now. I mean, the next thing is is we're getting the football, and we're going to see exactly what he does here in 2020, and we're able to kind of close the book, at least at the moment, for that contract talk because it, it's there's nothing else you can do about it except for maybe get a long-term deal done next season. So uh, with that even being said, I think I, I want to go back and, and talk about just real quickly, you, you mentioned that he brought up that we weren't playing smart football. I think that was not necessarily a jab to the coaching staff. I think that was more of a, a just a, a straight, flat-out statement on the players and, and exactly what the execution was like as a whole last year. It just wasn't necessarily what they ex expected it to be. I mean, you, you go into 2019 with all these expectations, much like we are in 2020, I think it's a little bit different than uh, maybe last year, but you have to have a chance to execute now this season because you weren't able to do so a year ago, Isaiah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was a jab either. I mean, you don't talk about previous coaches. That's just a that's just a no no. Um, when you're the, when you're the leader of the team, obviously, I played quarterback in college and a little bit in the league, and that's just something you just don't do. You don't go down that rabbit hole. So you guys see him, uh, you know, play a little dodgeball on that one um, and get and get around that question. But um, you know, you're focused on the future. You know, you're focused on the future. I think it's always critical um, as the leader of the team, as a leader of the organization, um, the most highly acclaimed organization in the world by. Uh, just, just so everybody's clear on that to, to let everybody know that there, there has to be some form of accountability right we weren't we weren't good last year we didn't play good we had pieces to be good but we but because of our our faults because of what we didn't do right we did not succeed um, so acknowledging that not only as an individual but acknowledging that as a leader of the team is important so that is said is stated everybody's clear on that now it's our opportunity to go out there and show what we didn't do last year, we have opportunity to prove that this year with a much better team. And thank goodness, because it's time to, to talk football again, but it's also time to, to prove some of these expectations, Absolutely. right, with a new coaching staff, a whole new uh, realm of players. Guys, we got Everson Griffin. I don't know if we talked about that. <laughs> did we mention that? Uh, did we mention that? So, I, I think we did, but we, we got that last night, too. I don't know if you can tell. I'm excited about that. I'm pretty pumped up about it. But be. uh, Before we head to this next break, wanted to, to remind you that if you're looking for something different to change up your dinner routine, help support local Frisco businesses by choosing one of the Star District restaurants. For more information on delivery, takeout, curbside pickup, and dine-in availability, visit thestardistrict.com. Lots of great options around there, so go try and check that out. Uh, take out, be safe, be socially distant, so we can have fans in the stands this football season coming up here in, in just less than four weeks now, or close to four weeks Ooh. now, which is crazy to think about moving forward. But when we come back, we, even with that Everson Griffin signing, Leighton Vander Esch is the missing key and the biggest addition, a healthy Leighton Vander Esch, for this defense moving into 2020. We'll tell you why when we come back here on Dallas Cowboys, or on Talking Cowboys. <laughs> Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. 
Stetson Hats, the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys, and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too far? Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor! Angus. A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. Based on GWS1 score September 2019. To Dallas' frontline responders, thank you. To show its gratitude, Tide is offering free laundry services in Dallas to the families of frontline responders. Simply bring your laundry and your identification to Tide Cleaners and they will wash it within two days. One thing less for you to worry about. While you take care of us all, Tide will take care of the laundry for the families of frontline responders. To learn more and find a location near you, visit hope.tidecleaners.com. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer, where you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses. You can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more. Do more. Back to Talking Cowboys. Training camp is finally here in 2020, and you can get your training camp coverage with the 2020 Dallas Cowboys Star Magazine Training Camp Preview. It's a long title, but it's a longer magazine with plenty to read. The preview includes an inside look on scouting reports, position battles, the final roster projections, and even more. Get your copy today at 495 only 495 on dallascowboys.com slash star we all kind of contributed to that in different bits and pieces so go check it out it's a ton of fun to read through it i've read through the digital version i still haven't had the the physical copy in hand but it's definitely worth it uh to go check that out especially because training camp starts full practices start tomorrow for the dallas cowboys at the star in frisco then they start 8 a.m weekday practices monday and it's every day from here on out, you're talking <laughs> to Mike McCarthy every morning. You're you're getting your your Cowboys in even before we uh, really wake up in the morning for most people, I guess. But uh, uh, it, it's exciting that it's also here. But I will say there's not going to be Everest and Griffin in that training camp preview magazine. Just tune to us to talk about Everest and Griffin stuff because we're excited about it in, in general. But uh, <laughs> wanted to talk about the front seven, and and I mentioned and teased a little bit earlier in the show that Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith may be the two that benefit the most from the Griffin signing because of how much it frees them up, along with Tank Lawrence as well. We talked about that earlier. You should go check that out. But I think whenever it comes to this front seven, Rob, you, you're already making the switch between Leighton Van Der Esch going to the Mike linebacker, Jalen Smith back to the will, something that I think we all kind of anticipated, and it's not necessarily a surprise, but the excitement for that is ramped up because of what, Griffin brings to the table from a pass rush, pass rush perspective. Yeah, you mentioned it. I mean, it, freeing up the linebackers to run and chase and make plays. And we talked about it all offseason, really the middle of the defensive line, too, with Terry Poe that can eat up space mm-hmm. and, and occupy blockers and allow that to happen. I think it all kind of goes together. Uh, you know, we talked to Van Der Esch last week. And by the way, he says his neck is great. Uh, he's mm-hmm. going to have a little more, a little more padding. Uh, for his neck roll this year, but he's he's 100 percent, which is great. Um, I'm, I'm curious, Isaiah. You know, he kind of downplayed the shift to the mic because he said, you know, there's going to be times where I'll be outside the box, Jay will play inside the box. It's it's not that big of a difference. But he is, if he is the mic, he's going to be in charge of making the calls pre-snap, and that's more of a responsibility. Uh, but I think he's got a chance maybe to benefit both guys. Yeah, it should benefit both guys. And like we kept, you know, obviously to Heckman's point, the hybrid thing, right? So guys are going to be moving around. But to your point, Van Der Esch, you know, the Wolf, he's going to be, he's he's the captain of the defense. 
If you're if you're playing Mike Linebacker, you are the captain of the defense. You are the quarterback on that side of the ball. So he's going to be responsible for making sure that everybody's aligned properly. I mean, everywhere from the linebackers being where they're supposed to be, communicating the calls to the secondary, you know, tapping the, the, the interior D linemen on the butt, getting them in the right gaps. That's his job, right? Um, but obviously we're talking about these guys on their front four. These guys are going to be interchanging all the time. They're going to be able to apply pressure. And like you mentioned, these guys will be able to roam free on the second level, right? But um, something else to be considering here and be, be thinking about is the fact that Vander Esch, even though he's adding a little bit more padding to that neck roll, as the Mike linebacker, you are going to take the most contact out of any of those three guys, right? So mm-hmm. uh, though we're excited about him being able to be free up a little bit, if guys do get to that second level, guess who they're meeting? They're meeting, they're meeting that wolf. That's yeah. a great point. Yeah. And I think whenever you look at split safety coverages and the way that they kind of read those RPOs, the, the Mike linebacker is the guy, like you said, who's the captain of the defense, one, but he's also the first read. He, he's the mm-hmm. guy who's going to have to either plug the run gap or work back in coverage. And I think either way, Heckma, it, that's going to benefit Leighton Vander Esch and Jalen Smith. We've said it all offseason. Jalen Smith's better when he's running downhill and he's going and, and rushing. He's not necessarily the best when it comes to the change of the direction and, and reading on a dime. That's what Leighton Vander Esch is good at. So this is a, a kind of a no-brainer for Mike Nolan. Yeah, I mean, well, Kyle, look at it like this. I mean, I, I think from a defensive standpoint, uh, there's people are making a lot of this move of Leighton Vander Esch to Mike and, and Jalen Smith to Will, but the position is almost the same. I mean, the reads mm-hmm. are the same. The only difference is, is the Mike is calling the plays uh, on defense. And look, for Jalen Smith, for both of these guys, you, you have to think and, and go back to last year where the expectation was they were going to continue from where they were in 2018. They were the best, one of the best duos in the NFL and this young duos, and there are a ton of very, very talented linebackers. And Look, last year wasn't their best uh, uh, output. Uh, Leighton Van Der Esch gets get hurt, gets hurt. But then he's saying right now, look, I feel good, guys. And having him at the mic, having him protected now by having guys in front of him. I mean, look, man, you got those big old butts in the middle. And that doesn't sound right. You got those big old guys in the middle, <laughs> right? And and you have these guys gobbling up those blocks and giving these guys the opportunity to run downhill. But also with Jalen Smith, you put him and an advantage of what his strength really is. And that's actually coming after the quarterback. And so that weak side blitz now is going to increase with Jalen Smith. Also, I mean, there were the questions about him changing direction, but his changing direction with a tackle ear holing you is the biggest issue and so now he doesn't have to worry about that because he has that girth up front with those guys that are protecting him I mean look if you ask you know guys like Ray Lewis who protected you Haloti Nada is a guy that he probably said still sends a Christmas card to Don Terry Poe is going to be the guy for Leighton Van Der Esch that he sends that Christmas card to Rob yeah, and I think, you know, with Jalen, there, there was games that stand out to me like Chicago where he was in coverage a lot, you know, and that was something down the middle where they were looking for him in that situation. And maybe it's not going to be as, as much as highlighted where you guys are right, where he's able to rush and, and get after the quarterback. It's all about that versatility deal. And, and Van Resch, by the way, can do that too. Sean Lee can do that too. They've got linebackers that have a knack for blitzing and getting to the quarterback. So, I, you know, I, I think Van Der Esch, is willing to take on the challenge of being that quarterback, as Isaiah said. He's very diligent, as Jalen is, about doing it. Um, and, you know, I, I think maybe he would have, you know, I, he didn't want to talk about his injury last week at all. Um, he doesn't have a preseason to get a live, you know, a tackling to get that first hit, you know. And I don't know how important, I don't know how important that is. Um, but guys in the past have, with the Cowboys, have had that neck surgery. Daryl Johnston being one of them, and they've come back and been able to play. So it's obviously encouraging, and they feel good about him doing it. Uh, but, you know, he's, there, there is no preseason to get that tested. And that's really a, a big thing for me because, he, yeah, he, he was frustrated. He didn't want to talk about that during his press conference. But at the same time, it's a worry. It's, and I, I, we all know it's a worry for him specifically and for this coaching staff because having Leighton Van Der Esch in the middle of that defense – is about as key of a cog as you potentially could have. You could have all the pass rush up front. The secondary, of course, it still needs improvement from a Cowboys perspective, but if you have those linebackers to complement the defensive line, then all of a sudden the secondary doesn't bother you as much. But 
but behind Leighton Vander Esch, if that should happen, uh, whether it's uh, it's an injury, God forbid. Yeah. What is the depth like at linebacker? Joe Thomas is back there. Luke Gifford potentially Gifford. with a breakout year. Hopefully he stays healthy and he has a little bit more playing time. But is there any worry about the linebacking depth as a whole in that core? No, I, I'm not worried about the, the linebacking core. For, I mean, I think Luke Gifford, like you said, if he's able to stay healthy, he's going to be a guy that's going to be, you know, a, a well, you know, invited addition uh, to the linebacking core. Also, Joe, Tom, I think Thomas is also that guy uh, as well. But look, these guys have a, have something to prove. And just to further the point, um, Leighton Van Der Esch, coverage wise, I think of the two, he's definitely better in coverage. But also, I don't want to go roll over the fact that man. How how much the, the front seven is going to make their job easier for the linebackers. But let's talk about, you know, the secondary high for Ha Ha Clinton Dix, how he's yeah. going to be able to play free now and gamble because the front seven and the linebacker core is that much better. So, I mean, <coughs> every every piece of this is just one thing helps another thing helps another thing. And again, you know, we, you asked about the depth. I think that the depth is there. Uh, but also, I just believe that the defensive line is going to make all of this look so much better on the back end. I totally agree. Um, one thing I want everybody to also take into consideration is the fact that if we do run into some kind of um, depth issues, right, some injuries that may may present themselves, right, we do have Thomas that can step in. We do have, you know, Gilford that can step in as well. But what about the fact that we can switch up our defense and go into a 3-4 and drop mm. Alden Smith onto the edge and drop Anae onto the edge, right? And they don't have to be true coverage uh, linebackers in that sense. Right. We have the versatility. We have the personnel to really mix things up. And there's this dude named Mike Nolan who just may know how to mix things up on that side of the ball, so that's not, it's, it's not it's not a big worry because we're not paying we're not going to be playing just simply a straight four three base defense. It's, it's going to be all over the place, um, and, and, and we will be perfectly fine. Ooh, I think that's a great point, Isaiah. Yeah. Because whenever we're looking at three four four three, there's going to be a blurred line there this year. Mm -hmm. it, it really will be, and we've mentioned that before. But now you're starting to see it. Now you're starting to see the personnel makeup that makes it. A blurred line and when Mike McCarthy said hey there's gonna be six edge rushers only four interior guys on this roster that's uh, indicative of the fact that you're probably going to see a little bit more of a 3-4 look because of the option to, to take one of those guys off the line they've even mentioned taking Tank Lawrence and putting him in the two, two point stance mm -hmm. or having him play standing up which is something that he hasn't done a whole lot in his career but Rob this is something we've seen coming for a while but now we're starting to see maybe the formula put together to actually see the, the experiment happen yeah, we, we've touched on it for sure. I mean, every guy in that front seven, I, Poe's probably the exception. I think at 346, mm -hmm. you're a no tackle. <laughs> um, probably. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't see him dropping. But, but you know, it, I think Tank could do it. I think he's, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a terrific athlete. Um, you know, Alden Smith's been in that role too in, in San Francisco early in his career. And that's another guy we haven't really talked about him today. But um, – you know, I think there's a lot of optimism about what physically where he's at and he's in a better place in his personal life. And that's another guy that, you know, I think people see the name Alden Smith and they, they expect him to come in and be 19 and a half sack guy. Well, you bring in Everson Griffin and you've got some other depth on, on, on your defensive line and there's not that, that pressure for him. Just try to – they have a bunch of guys that can recreate uh, Robert Quinn's production on that side together. And, and I think with Griffin in, in the fold, they've got more than enough guys that can do that. In addition to what you said, Kyle, guys that can play different spots. If they want to change things up in the course of a game and try to completely throw off the opposing quarterback, they've got the versatility to try to do that. Yeah, Everson Griffin, for, for me, I think Everson Griffin is that guy that allows for Alden Smith just to be a dude, right? Mm -hmm. He's, he, he, it allows him to play free. Look, he, he hasn't been in the league. He hadn't taken a snap in years. And so he's going to be a little bit stiff. You know, and it's going to take him some time to get back in the rhythm of an NFL season. But again, it takes all of the pressure. Now, now what we start really talking about, do we see, does Randy Gregory even come into the fold of this conversation anymore because of the signing of Everson Griffith? So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot more to discuss on that part of it, but I think all it does is shore up everything. It gives you confidence going forward that we got the right mix of guys. 
Yeah, this this defense is really starting to remind me of of my Super Bowl year with the Giants. And no, no, no. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, okay. it's, a bad word. Okay. it's a bad word, right? Oh. <laughs> but we had a bunch of guys on that front seven that were interchangeable. Right, we 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 were able to go four down linemen. Then we were able to switch it up and go to a three four. Put Matthias, you know, Kiwanuka on the stand up end. Jason Pierre Paul on the end. Right, we had a core. Oh, we had we had we had a core of guys that were right there in the middle of the, of the defense that were not going to move. Right, you can't move it on the inside, but we can apply a lot of pressure from oh. the outside. Um, so there's the weapons are there. Uh, to you guys' point, it's, it's going to be fun. I can't wait to see what Nolan puts together, man. I know I'm sorry I threw the Giants out there, but hey, oh. it, it was a long time ago. Long time ago. You had me <laughs> <in> Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're ending on that one, boys. We're, we're done. That's it. That's talking Cowboys. I mean, Isaiah just threw it out there. We're throwing the expectations out the roof. It's it's over. Let's chalk it up. It, it, we're back, boys. And that's the thing is is there's so many exciting expectations around not only the Cowboys season, but specifically the signing of Everson Griffin. It takes the pressure off your linebackers. It takes the pressure off Tank Lawrence. It takes the pressure off the deep tackles. Same thing in the secondary. Off of uh, really even having a scheme as a, in general, there's going to be excitement and there's going to be options, and that's exactly what you wanted going into this offseason. And you're going to have options coming up as a Cowboys fan in terms of your media coverage as well. Coming up over the next couple of days, the podcasts are back. We're back for good. We're back through the end of this season. We'll be back on Tuesday, so you don't even have to wait a full week to get more Talking Cowboys. We'll be back Tuesday at 11 a.m., and then each of us will be spread out on different uh, different programming throughout the week as well, so be sure to, to follow each of us. But for Isaiah Stanback, for Heckma Harrison, for Rob Phillips, and for Chris Beam running the show back in studio, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long this time for Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!